Have you been looking for a simple configuration with an express server on the back end and on the front end, a simple client using Webpack to bundle the HTML and JavaScript resources? Well, you've come to the right place. I've got a self-contained project which is simple to debug in VS Code using a Webpack dev server to debug the client side and an express web server for the server side. So let's get started. Okay, so in this project, I'm going to cover the project initialization, and then I'll cover debugging the server. After that, I'll cover debugging the client, and after that, I'll cover debugging the server and the client, and then cover some of the options, and finally, the build. Okay, to the first order of business, what I want to do is actually initialize the project. What that means is I want to download the libraries for the client and server. So the way I do that, I'm going to run npm install. And while it's installing, I'll explain how that's done. And so if I look at the scripts for the root of the project for the package.json, it's the instructions for the node package manager. And what it happens is I CD in the client and I run npm install. And then I CD into the server and run npm install. Now this isn't following any particular package format like Learn or Yarn. And what that means is I have a client and then I have a server and both of them have package.json. So essentially what this is is a simple container format where I can host a simple website. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but in this particular case, I just wanted to show that this was possible with a client server configuration. Now that I've covered install, let me highlight the other scripts in the root package.json manifest. And that is clean. And what that does is clean the disk directory. And what the disk directory is an output of the client and server glued together. And I'll cover this in more detail later in the video. The next script is build. What this does is run a clean, and then I run build client, and then run build dist. And those are two other build scripts or within the scripts configuration. So the build client CDs into the client runs npm run build. This will run webpack and bundle the HTML and JS resources. The build dist, what that means is I'm gonna copy the server resources, and then I'll copy the static HTML resources from the webpack bundle into a server directory called dist. So it'll all be glued together. And I'll cover this in more detail later in the video. And last but not least, if I wanted to debug the server from the dist directory, I could simply run npm run server from dist, and this will run the node process, which runs express.js. And I'll cover this in more detail later in the video. So now that I've initialized the project, I wanna show you how I debug and configure the server. Stay tuned because I'll be covering the client configuration in a moment and then both client and server. So let's get started with the server. I'm going to close the root package.json, move into the server directory, and just explain the pieces that are in the server directory. Starting with package.json, I have a simple package.json configuration which are npm or node package manager instructions. And to note, I only have one scripts configuration and I'll show this in a moment. And that basically starts the express server. Okay, let's look at the express server configuration. It's a JavaScript file that sets up the express web server. I'll go through this and highlight the configuration at a high level. I'm going to import the express library, a path library, and then I'm gonna define the port as 3000, and I'm gonna define the host as 000, so it listens on all the NICs. And then the HTML directory, I'm gonna define as the directory name that this is executed from, and HTML. So if I look at that, what is in the HTML directory? I have a simple index.html. Now later in the show, I'm gonna replace this with, in the disk directory with the Webpack bundle. But in the case of I wanted to debug the server on its own, I have a file to verify it's working properly. So if I go back to the express file, I instantiate the express server as app, and then I define the parameters or the configuration the express web server is configured. So the HTML directory is defined as the root directory. So anything that dials up root will be pointed to the HTML directory and static resources in that directory. Now I've got a couple other configurations, and then I'll be using this as the server side configuration for the client. So the client can request server-side resources. In this case, I have forward slash API. So if you dial up 000 or localhost forward slash API with the port, of course, 
It will give you back API works. Try Git message. So what is Git message? Git message is another endpoint that I return JSON. And I'll show the simple configuration when it loads the bundle, it will have a button that will request this resource and return it and render it on the page. Last but not least, the express server is initialized with the listen on port and host, which is basically going to be localhost. So that's a simple web server configuration that I'll be using for this. I don't have a lot of boilerplate to this project. There's nothing special about it. It's really simple to debug. So how would I debug this? There's two ways I could do it. Like I said, I could go over to server, open up, a, open up this directory in the terminal and go npm start. And this will load up the server on localhost 3000 or 0000. So that was easy. So I'm gonna go control C to break that process. And the second way I can debug it is I can go over to the launchers. Now with this launch configuration, I have all the launchers built into the project already. So if you clone this project, you'll get the launchers with it. You can also copy and paste them to your project and define it as such. So if I look at the launch server, it's the very first one. And I, I number these because I'll cover them in greater detail as we glue it together. So the very first one is launch server. Well, what does that do? So let me just go to the gear. This will take me to the launch configurations. The launch server is a node process. The node process runs from the working directory of the workspace folder and forward slash server. Now, if you look, it's the same directory in the project forward slash server. So the root of the project, the workspace folder, is the root of this project here. And then you can see client and server. So I'm gonna skip the node modules and I wanna say what the program is, which is the entry point for the process is the workspace folder server express.js. So if I run this process, it's the same thing as running npm start, but with the VS Code launcher. The advantages of using the VS Code launcher allows me to breakpoint and spec and watch the process within VS Code. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the process. And you can see in the console output, it's the same thing as npm start. So that was really easy. Now let's take a look at that and what that looks like in a web page. Okay, now I'm gonna load this endpoint up in a browser. Okay, great. What you see here is the one index.html page that is listed in the HTML directory. Now what if I dialed in forward slash API? Now that works, that's great. That was the other endpoint. And then within this, I have a quick link to get message. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, great, it returns some JSON. Message says the board is green. So that's great. The server side process now works. What if I wanted a breakpoint on this process within VS Code? So let me just go through that process real quick. So if I go into the directory and I wanna to go to the express server configuration and I wanna break on one of the directories. So what do I wanna do is put a breakpoint on get API, get message. So when I run this page, it breaks on API, get message. So let's just see how that works. So I'm gonna go back to the web page and reload it. So great, it breaks on the request to API get message. So great, now I can inspect this process frame. So if I look, I can see all the variables and, and how they are defined within this request. So that's great, that was pretty easy to do. So now that I can take that even further and build my app and set breakpoints and debug the server side at any time. So now I can debug the server side. So that was pretty easy. Now the more challenging piece is, how do I glue this together with the client side? So now that I've done inspecting the process, I'm gonna continue by clicking continue or run in the debugger. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Well, how would I build and debug the client side? And then after that, I'm gonna cover debugging the client side with the server side and show the magic process that happens there. Okay, so now on to the client side or front end. The client side, I use a Webpack bundler to bundle the resources and prep them for hosting. To start with, I'm gonna cover the package.json or the NPM instructions. I can also run this project from NPM 
or the node package manager. What that means is if I run npm start, it will run the webpack dev server and it will execute the instructions in the webpack config.js file. I can also run npm run build, which will bundle the resources and put them in the disk directory. And I'll cover this more in detail in a moment. The next step is I want to cover the webpack config instructions. What that means is these are the bundler instructions for the JavaScript and HTML resources. Now I've only got two files to bundle in this context or this demo or this configuration. I wanted to keep it simple because I wanted to highlight how easy it is to debug both webpack and the express server together. So to start, I'm not covering a complicated configuration format where I have a production and development environment. I've simply set the mode to development. The import pieces are entry, output, plugins, and dev server. I'm going to cover a small piece of this configuration format. There's a lot of options to webpacking and bundling your application. I'll start off with a simple configuration. I'm going to set the JavaScript entry point to index.js. I'm going to name the file the bundle name or the app name bundle.js. And then I'm going to output it to the disk directory. So when I run the dev the webpack dev server or the build server, it's going to clean the disk directory and then it's going to take the template index.html, which would be my index or starting page, and insert or inject the app bundle.js. That will be the JavaScript entry point when the page loads. It will execute that JavaScript. Now the debugging piece to this is the dev server. These dev server instructions are run from npm start, or I can run from the VS code. And I'll show that in a little bit greater detail. The content base will be the dist directory, which is the root of this execution process with dist directory. I'm going to set the port to 8080, and I'll show you why that's important when I debug the API server together with the Webpack dev server. Now I'm going to cover this in a little bit. The proxy configuration for the, the express server is forward slash API, and I'll show you a little bit more in the next section where I cover debugging both the Webpack dev server and the API server or the express web server as the back end together in one experience. In that case, I'm running the express server on port 3000. And the reason why I have two ports is I don't want to have conflicts in the, my two debugging processes. Okay, so how would I debug it? So I'm going to start with the package.json or node package manager context. And I want to run npm start. So I'm going to open up the client directory in the terminal so I can debug that process. So I've already installed the project, so I'm going to run npm start. This will run the webpack compiler process and compile it. It doesn't open up a dev server. It doesn't open up a web browser. I could do that, but I don't have that configured. I have another step that I like to use, and I'll show you that in a moment. And that step is where I could run the browser from the launcher in VS Code. So now that I've compiled it, how would I debug it in VS Code? So if I wanted to debug it in VS Code, I could go to the run context and then go to the second launcher I've created in this configuration. So I'll go to the second launcher, but before I started, I'll show you what that means. It's another node process, like the server process. It's in the configurations array, and this node process will launch the program called Webpack Dev Server. Now this is loaded in the node modules. Its current working directory will be forward slash client or the workspace or the root of the project forward slash client. Because I'm working from the root of the project, I add client. And then I use the args environment development. I could pass in args like env environment development or production and so forth. But the most important piece is I just want to highlight I can change the configuration or webpack config with the config parameter or argument. Now I've set the environment to development, node environment to development. I'll cover this in later videos as I dig in deeper to the node processes and options that you can run in VS Code. Now last but not least, I will be covering the Chrome launcher. It's a simple process that launches Chrome so I can use the webpack with source maps. So now, how would I run that same process 
from Chrome. So now how would I start the Webpack dev server from VS Code? Okay, I'm gonna stop the process, the Webpack dev server, because it's running a embedded web server to host the Webpack server. So I'm gonna go Control C on the process and stop that. If I didn't stop that, it would conflict with my VS Code launcher. So I'm gonna to go to the VS Code launcher next. I'm gonna to go to the run context up to the second uh, launcher configuration where it says launch client, and I'm gonna launch this process. This will launch the same process that I just started with the NPM start. But in this case, it doesn't show up in the terminal, it shows up in the debug console. It's the exact same process, except it's marshaled through VS Code. Okay, now that it's running, how would I debug it in the browser? Well, I wanna load this up in the browser. I know it's running on 8080, so I'm gonna just go to the browser that I started with the server, and I'm gonna change the port to 8080. In this case, it loads up the simple web page. And if I try the local API request, when I press on this button, it doesn't do anything. And that's because I don't have the server running. If I click on this and the server's running, it will return back the JSON and render it on the web page. So that's really easy to set up a Webpack dev server and run it. Now the real magic comes when I glue all these pieces together and run all three of the configurations together in one. So let's get to that. You might be wondering, what is the black magic that allows me to debug the client side and the server side together without having problems with two different ports? So how do I do that? Well, we remember when I went to the Webpack configuration, I showed the forward slash API. Well, this is a reverse proxy to the localhost 3000, which I'll be running the web server from. So this allows me to run port 8080 in its own configuration context. Without any problems, I can run the Webpack dev server and the API server or web server on the back end. So how do I do that? So let me go back and review the configurations that I have in VS Code. So I'm gonna to go to the launch context and I'm gonna open up the gear and show the launch configurations. And remember earlier on, I started the web server on port 3000 as the first launch configuration. And then I started the Webpack dev server, which was hosted on 8080. Okay, and then last but not least, I'm gonna show how to launch Chrome from the launch configuration. And then I'm gonna cover why I start the launch configuration in this format. Okay, so let me just start these processes. So this is the same thing I did earlier on in the video. So let me start one. This will start the web server on port 3000. So let me start two. This will start the Webpack dev server on 8080. Let me start three, which is Chrome, and it will load up the client side on port 8080. Okay, so it's loaded up on port 8080. Well, how do I know the server is running? Earlier on, I clicked on the button and it didn't return anything. So what will happen in this context? I click on the button and it returns the board is green. So how does it do that? So let me just explain what happens here. So when I run port 3000, it runs the web server on port 3000. Well, that's obvious. I run the client server on 8080. Well, that's obvious. Well, just to review, I have a proxy configuration and the Webpack dev server and its reverse proxy is pointed at API. So it proxies all the requests for API to the local web server. So this is a great way to host a Webpack dev server debugging environment with a express web server on the back end. So that was pretty cool. But what if I wanted to add breakpoints on the client side or the server side? How would that work? Well, let's just look at that. It's pretty nifty what you can do. Okay, so what I wanna do is go to the client side code index.js and what's happening here? Okay, so what happens when this index.js is loaded, it adds a listener to the button element. And when this button element has a click event, it will fetch the message from the server from forward slash API get message. Then, because it's a promise, once that message is fetched, it will delineate the JSON and pass it in the promise chain to render data. This JSON data then will render to the inner HTML of the response element. Okay, so that's pretty cool. What if I wanted to, to break on the fetch 
or I wanted to break on the return or response. So let's just see how that would work. So I set breakpoints, and now if I go back to the web page, I'm going to reload it and then just click on try. Well, that was really cool. It hit now using source maps, it has paused and stopped on the function or in the function before the fetch request. So now with this, with VS Code, I can actually inspect the stack um, in this process. So I'm gonna to go to the run context and I can look at the stack. And if you notice, it's all the same local variables that you would see in the dev tools in Chrome. So that's really cool. You can stay in the same context as your code in the IDE. So let me just resume and move to the next step. Okay, so it, it stopped on the response and I can inspect the JSON data. And you can see the message, the board is green. So that's really cool what VS Code can do with source maps and Chrome Dev Tools. So that's really neat. So what if I wanted to stop and break on the server side process? Well, let me just resume and set a breakpoint on the server side process. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the server side code and set a breakpoint in the express server. Now this express server, obviously I only have one file. I may have a more complicated endpoint where it does a bunch of logic, but in this case, I just have a simple response. So I'm gonna break on this, the board is green. So when I request that or click on the message, let's just see what happens. So I'm gonna click try. It goes to the fetch, that's before the server side. So I'm gonna resume. Yay, it's in the server context. I just now have stopped before it responded, the message the board is green. Now if I resume again, it stops on the render data on the client side. So that's really cool. I've now just added breakpoints to both the client side before it went to the server side and then on the server side and then back to the client side. I don't know what you think about that, but I think that's really cool. That empowers me to really have a full debugging experience with VS Code on both the client side and the server side in a simple Webpack dev server configuration with the web server context using a reverse proxy. So all those magical pieces really make for a full functioning debugging experience, which really excites me when I want to increase my velocity as a developer to both debug and build rich, complex applications in VS Code. And to add, that makes it great for enterprise environment debugging. So let me just go ahead and resume and finish the debugging experience. So this application build works really well in a Docker container on AWS. And I'll cover that in greater detail in a video to come. So last but not least, there's one more step to this experience that I wanna cover, and that's the build process. The build process really makes it easy to glue the client and server together. And what does that mean? I remember earlier on, I covered in the video about the npm run build. Well, npm run build will clean the disk directory, build the client and build the disk. What that means is the client will build client, will CD into the client, npm run build, and then CD back. And then build disk, it will copy the server resources to the disk directory, and then it will copy the client directory and move the static resources that were compiled and bundled to the HTML in the disk directory. Okay, so let's just run that process. So I'm gonna to go to the terminal, and this is the root of the project now, and, and then run npm run build. And that will execute the scripts. So now that it's built the scripts, let's just see what it did. I'll go into the disk directory of the root of the project and look. There's the node modules which Express uses to run the process. And there's the HTML directory with the bundled resources. There's the template and you'll see main.bundled.js and there's the main.bundled.js. In this case, I don't have them minified, but I just wanted to show you that was really easy to bundle the resources and put them in the disk directory with both the server and client context. Okay, so that was really easy. Now I wanna debug this process just to make sure everything was glued together properly with all the libraries and everything I needed within the source code of the project. So how would I debug this process? 
Well, I've only got one debugger to worry about in this context because it's on the way out the door and I just want to test it before I ship it to the server. And now let's just look at the package.json. The package.json I have run server from dist. Now if I run npm run server from dist, now it will run the express server from the dist directory. So let me just confirm by going to the web page. I'll open it up and see if it loads. All right, fantastic. Now you can see I'm running from port 3000 and both the client and server context is together and I don't have any black magic to worry about. It simply just works, which is fantastic. So let me go back to the VS Code context. So now that I've built everything, it's ready to go and I want to ship it out the door. Well, I've wired up Travis.ci to build and do the same thing that I did here in my local NPM environment. What I have here in the YAML instructions for Travis is I'm going to use Node.js. I'm going to use LTS. What I want to do is in the install lifecycle, I want to run npm install, and then I want to run npm run build. Last but not least, I want to deploy to my infrastructure. And in later videos, I'm going to cover this deploy context, such as deploying to AWS or GCP or some other fun hosting service. I won't cover the deploy context today, but I will cover just what happens when I commit to Travis. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got a quick change I made while I was debugging this. I realized I had, to, I had to update my build instructions for the disk directory. So I did that. So I have a change. So I'm going to commit it. Let's just assume it's some business logic in my code and I want to commit it. So this is my commit um, fixed build process. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and commit that. And then I'm going to push it up with Git Lens. Okay, I'm going to load up Travis CI. So now that it's started the build process, you can follow along and watch the output and life cycle of the build. Travis is a fantastic and easy utility to build and deploy my project. I really like Travis because it's so easy to build and deploy any one of my projects. So you can see it ran the same exact process that I ran locally. It web packed and bundled my HTML and glued the resources together just like I would have locally. Now they're ready to deploy at a later time. So later on I will show how to build and deploy using Travis to a number of infrastructures. So keep your eyes peeled and I'll show the tips and tricks on how to use the Travis platform to increase your velocity as a developer. That brings me to a conclusion on debugging a client and server configuration using Webpack on the front end and an express server on the back end. I'll be covering a lot of different angles on debugging in my future episodes. Thanks for watching today and follow me for more tips and tricks and I'll catch you later.